Welcome to Statistical Methods Summer 2023 Syllabus. The catalog description for this course is an introduction to descriptive and inferential statistics. Students learn how to use measures of central tendency and dispersion among population samples to draw inferences about a population and to compare two or more populations. Discrete and continuous probability density, density distributions are analyzed including the binomial normal, student t, chi-squared, and f distributions. Confidence intervals for population means, proportions, and variance are determined. Additional topics include regression and correlation analysis and techniques of hypothesis testing, including analysis of variance, also known as ANOVA. And the course includes application of technology for statistical analysis and the interpretation of the relevance of the statistical findings. Applications use data from disciplines that include business, social sciences, psychology, life science, health science, and education. So we have a recommended uh, prerequisite, which is a Math 40 of, uh, with a grade of C or better, or two years of high school algebra, elementary and intermediate algebra with a grade of B or better, within the last three years, or math placement exam. Okay, so this is a four-credit unit uh, course. The time, day, and room of the class meeting is online and the location of the class is online. My name is Anthony Siciliano. I am the instructor and there's my email address. My office is in room 212 and there is my telephone number and extension. Here are the student office hours for the summer. I'll be meeting Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, the same time from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on Zoom and then from 3 p.m. to 3.48 p.m. on Zoom as well. This is the meeting ID, so this is the ID or the link that you need to be able to just like stop by during those student office hours. They're called student office hours because they're for you, not for me. So please, uh, I welcome you to join during those times. Again, this is going to also be on campus. Now, again, as I stated here, student office hours are for your benefit to help you succeed in the course. Office hours are for you, the student not for me as I am available at those times not only to discuss the course but any questions you have about math courses at the college, your field of study, your transfer plans and career paths. The best way to reach me is email and it must be your student email account. Always include your name in the course. All email contact between students and instructors must be conducted using the student and instructor CMC email accounts. For students, this is accessible via the MyCMC portal on the CMC website. Any student email received by faculty from another email account cannot be responded to other than to remind the student to use their school email account. Please also keep in mind that grades cannot be distributed by phone, public posting, public announcement, or by email. Now, what is required for the course? The required, what is required is an access code for my lab with an online textbook. Uh, the author of the, the text is Triola, My Lab Statistics with Pearson eText, and there is the ISBN number. It's also available in the CMC bookstore, or you can find it online on the My Lab website. Textbook. Because an electronic version of the textbook is available in My Lab, you do not have to purchase a textbook unless you choose to do so. Instructor communication, information participation, guidelines, and feedback policy. Students are encouraged to send an email anytime, 24-7, call my office, or leave voice messages. If I'm going to be away for an extended period and I know in advance, I will let you know in the announcement section of our course in Canvas. However, my policy is that I will usually respond within 12 to 24 hours except on weekends. Each week, I will provide grades or scores and comments on assignments within 4 to 6 days of when they were submitted. After I send feedback each week, you will receive notification through your email or in a classroom announcement that feedback has been sent. Check grades for your feedback scores. As your instructor for this course, my goal is to facilitate your learning, answer questions, and encourage your participation. I'll respond in a timely manner on a consistent basis. I'll provide feedback in the Q&A section of each unit you may want to discuss. Student Learning Outcomes. Upon successful completion of the class, the student will be able to describe, graph, calculate, and analyze statistical quantities and concepts including data types, levels of measurement, sampling strategies, frequency distributions, parameters, and descriptive statistics. 
determine the probability of an event, use various distributions to estimate parameters for population using samples and formulate a test, a hypothesis, including ANOVA, and then they'll analyze and make predictions for paired data using the linear correlation coefficient, linear regression, standard error, prediction interval, explained variation, unexplained variation, and total variation. These outcomes will be assessed by questions on the quizzes, projects, and final exam, in addition to your written assignments. So here is your grading component uh, as this will be determined in this class. So here's your grade component. You have homework assignments, written assignments, which is worth 25% of your grade. Projects, there are two of them, which is worth 15% of your grade. Quizzes, there are six quizzes, 40% of your grade. Final exams, part one and part two, are worth 20% of your grade. And then right below that is the grading scale. Attendance. All students are expected to log in and complete some work at least once a week. Each week without work is considered absent from two class meetings. A student who adds a class or registers after the first day of classes is counted absent from all weeks missed. In the effort to promote student success, CMC has approved the implementation of an instructor-initiated drop policy. When a student has been absent from class to such an extent that his or her success is at risk, the instructor, instructor has the option of dropping the student. If the student has missed 12.5%, which is five classes or two and a half weeks of the semester without notifying the instructor with a satisfactory explanation, the student may be dropped by the instructor. Less than full participation in this course is extremely disruptive to the online learning model, so I reserve the right to drop you if, one, you do not complete the online orientation assignment by earning 100% on that assignment, you will have as many attempts as you need. Number two, you fail to make any progress for four or more consecutive days, including weekends. Three, you fail to take final exam parts one and two as scheduled in the class. Per the college's attendance policy, faculty has the right to develop a more stringent policy as well. Students who do not attend or participate in class by the deadline to drop for tuition refund may be deleted from the course. In this class, we function as a team teaching and learning together in small groups that are reorganized from one module to the next. However, if you quit participating in this class, you should not assume that I would drop you. Should you choose to drop, ultimately it is your responsibility to officially withdraw. Now again, going back on attendance, this is a condensed class. This is a seven-week summer class. Seven weeks that normally during the semester is a 16-week course. So it's extremely important that you stay on top of the material from the get-go. Um, if you have any questions, again, I would definitely recommend that you speak with me during those office hours. Materials. We will be using the data analysis package StackCrunch in this course. StackCrunch is an online data analysis tool and much more. StackCrunch is included in your subscription when you purchase the access code for my lab. You will be able to access StackCrunch with your assignments. Now, sometimes when you log into StackCrunch, it may say that you need to purchase it. That could be because you may need to make sure that you have the correct browser updated because it is automatically part of your subscription when you uh, get the access code for my lab. Homework, study tips, homework videos. Guided notebook. This is an activity manual located on Canvas that you can access, download, and print. This is a place where you can take notes on the information given in the lectures by filling in all the information from the slides in the notebook. This will be a valuable resource for you as you work through the online homework assignment for each section, as well as the quizzes and tests over the corresponding material. Pay close attention to the homework videos located on Canvas. This will be helpful to you as you move along with your homework assignments. On Canvas, my recommendation is to please make sure you watch the video in regards to the guided notebook. So it's like imagining yourself that you're physically in class and while you're physically in class you're going to watch the video lectures but then you have a notebook to be able to fill in that information. You would need that in order to then proceed to the homework so you have uh, a knowledge base before you start the assignment. If you go straight into the homework it's going to be difficult to be able to figure out what you're doing. So again please make sure you access the guided notebook if you need more information on that, again, please visit me during student office hours. Due dates, late penalties, and technical difficulties. 
All written homework quizzes and projects have the following late penalty policy. Students submitting work for course requirements after the due date are subject to a penalty of 5% of the points possible for the assignment per day. That means for each day passing after the due date. So for example, submissions posted after the due date within 24 hours of the date the assignment is due will be penalized 5% of the potential value of the assignment. Submissions posted between 24 and 48 hours after the due date may be penalized up to 10% and so on. Due dates will not be extended because of technical difficulties. The deadlines for these assignments are not extended and you must make plans to complete these. Due dates for online assignments are clearly stated in my lab. So your assignments are due the following week, week which is on a Monday. Um, but you do not want to wait until Monday and then request an extension because technically you have the entire week to complete that assignment. So please don't use that due date as the day that you create or start your assignments. So that is the reason why that uh, due dates are not extended because this assignment has already been opened the week prior. Course grading and information. This is an asynchronous course, which means you will complete your coursework online and on your own schedule, but by the required deadline provided. This course is delivered through lecture videos I have created, located in the modules on Canvas, and an online course management system called MyLab. The assignments are graded automatically by the website and synced to Canvas. Registration for MyLab is required on the first day. Registration and video instructions are located on Canvas. There is an option for signing up for a 14-day temporary passcode. After you have that 14-day temporary passcode, it will, uh, you will need to then purchase the access code to then uh, continue on where you left off. Now, each week that we are going to study has three parts described below. Part 1, the guided notebook lecture videos. This is how you should start each particular lecture. You watch the lecture videos, read, Fill in and complete the guided notebook prior to the section homework. Make sure to begin each section by filling in the guided notebook while watching each lecture video. The course content is delivered to you via reading assignments, video presentation examples, also with video solutions and assessment questions. Part 2, Section Homework. Upon completion of each guided notebook section, you should jump to the section's homework. Homework problems can be worked on until a correct answer is obtained. Now there are also, if you take a look at each particular section homework on Canvas, you will also see that I've created homework videos for each individual homework problem that you can compare as you're working with those. Part 3, the quiz at the end of each week. Each week you have a quiz on the sections covered for that week. Passwords for the quizzes are in the outline module of each week located on Canvas. You have a maximum of two attempts for each quiz. My lab will keep the higher score of the two attempts. A missed quiz will be recorded as a zero. The instructor has the right to adjust this policy under special circumstances. Please make note there are no extensions for quizzes and there's no exceptions. Quiz deadlines are located on a tentative schedule on page five below. Now again, all homework and quizzes, parts two and three, are located on my lab and are due at the end of each week. Please review the late penalty policy that we talked about earlier in this syllabus. Written show your work calculation questions. You have written assignments for certain weeks of this course. Some weeks you'll be required to submit a written assignment. Most of your online homework assignments will be completed using StatCrunch. However, there will be basic questions to set up for success and understanding of the material and push your learning forward through the semester. The description of each written assignment is in the modules on Canvas. So again, I repeat, uh, there are a video of how to do your written assignments. You're required to show your work and then you're required to submit that um, on that particular assignment. So please pay attention to that video. And again, if you have any questions, please make sure to visit with me during those student office hours. Projects. You are required to do two applied real-world data analysis projects. The first project is a data analysis comparison report where you collect, analyze, and compare two quantitative data sets. The final project will be to collect and analyze data and perform a research hypothesis test to answer an important question about the world around us. 
For both projects, you're required to use StatCrunch and use PowerPoint slides to explain your results and findings. See the tentative schedule for the due dates. Description of each project are in the modules on Canvas. Peer Reviews A peer review assignment enables students to provide feedback on another student's assignment submission. Peer reviews allow communication between students and can help students master the concepts of the course and learn from each other. Peer reviews will be required for all written assignments and projects. The peer review assignment will not be available until after the due date of each assignment. Final exam. There will be a comprehensive final exam part 1 and 2. There are two parts for the mandatory final exam. To receive a grade in the course, you must complete both parts to the final exam. Final exam part 1 is a five question exam placed on Canvas as a downloadable file. Final exam part 2 will be located on my stat lab. Passwords for the quizzes and final exams again are in the outline of each week located on Canvas. The final exam can replace your lowest quiz score using the following approach. It is my policy to replace a student's lowest quiz grade with the final exam at the end of the course. So for this reason, I do not give makeup quizzes. So a missed quiz will be recorded as a zero and then replaced accordingly at the end of the semester. Missing the final will result in a zero and I do not drop this grade. The instructor has the right to adjust this policy under special circumstances. Please make note, there are no extensions for final exams, no extensions. So again, going back on this, you have six quizzes. So all, out of those six quizzes, your final exam score, depending on that score, can replace one of your lowest quiz scores. Again, if you need more information on that, please visit with me during student office hours. Students with disabilities access students with disabilities, whether physical learning or psychological, who may need academic support in the classroom are encouraged to contact access as soon as possible to ensure that appropriate accommodations and or services are implemented. Further information about this program may be found on the Copper Mountain College website and in the Office of Student Services at the access counter. So please make sure to visit CMC's access website for more information or you can also call the, look, the, the number there with that extension. Military Friendly Statement Veterans and active duty military personnel with special circumstances, such as upcoming deployments, drill requirements, disabilities, are welcome and encouraged to communicate these in advance if possible to the instructor. Equal Opportunity Statement Copper Mountain College is committed to equal employment opportunity for all persons and to provide educational and employment opportunities free from discrimination based on ethnic group identification, national origin, religion, age, veteran status, sex, race, color, ancestry, sexual orientation or physical or mental favors, and other physical or verbal conduct or communication constituting sexual harassment. Disclaimer, changes in the curriculum, grading standards, and other requirements could change as necessary. It is a student's responsibility to know and understand all policies, procedures, and requirements for Copper Mountain College and this class. Any concerns should be directed to your instructor, the appropriate department chair, or college administrator in that order. Information in this syllabus is subject to change. Any important changes will be announced in class and you will be provided with an updated syllabus. Okay, on this next page, page five, is the timeline for the course. So here is your tentative schedule. So this is kind of one I want you to use. It's also located on Canvas. So for example, if you take a look at the first week uh, from June 12th to June 18th, this is the course content that we're covering. And then there are the important information for your due dates. For week two, again, you see June 19th to June 25th. There are the sections that we're covering. And then there is the information of when the, each one is the due date. So you want to make sure that you have these handy, especially when you're completing your orientation assignment. So again, make sure you take a look at this as you're going through that. Okay. So, and then here, you want to make sure you read through the online classroom communication. This is the netiquette, which is the ground rules for online communication. So make sure you please take time to look for these 12 ground rules for online communication. Okay, 
And then the next page is the statement on plagiarism and academic misconduct. You have written assignments for this course. You have projects. So you want to make sure that you're following the appropriate academic rules for those projects. So please make sure that you read through this particular page as well. And then the last page is just the title and topics covered for the course. So each section tells you what we're covering for this course. So again, welcome to the class. And again, if you have any information, please, please stop by the student office hours and I'm there to help you with any questions that you may have.